how to make CBO work. The first thing we need to establish here is that it already does. Facebook CBO already does an amazing job of meeting their business objectives while also meeting the optimized for, you know, objectives that we as advertisers are trying to go for, you know, leads, conversions, et cetera, prioritized by our alignment with their business model. That already works exceptionally well. Now, maybe that doesn't mean that your best audience gets all the spend, but that's probably because they got the amount of spend that meets both their business objectives. And honestly, because of the breakdown effect, maybe that best audience would nearly be the best if you actually spend all your money there. We're going to cover a lot of this here. So let's pack it in. I'm excited. But first off, the thing we have to establish right off the bat is CBO already works exceedingly well in meeting the business objectives Facebook has. So why doesn't CBO spend on my best audience? Well, your best audience wouldn't be the best if it got all that spent. This is what's called the breakdown effect. And most commonly we see this, well, I've got a couple of interest groups. I've got a couple of lookalikes. Yeah, I've got broad, but it doesn't work, which is absolute nonsense. Here's why. Here's the complaint. Well, my lookalike did 20 times better than the other thing. My broad is bringing me in people at 50 bucks. My lookalikes bring them in 30, but you only spent 20% of the budget. Well, what do you think would happen if you spent 100% of your budget there? The efficiency wouldn't be nearly as good because remember, everything besides broad is almost always a predictive audience. So there's not the ability for us to optimize for placement. And honestly, this is why ABO. Oh. So how do we make Facebook work when it comes to CBO? Well, here's everything you need to know. Number one, more options equals less stability. If I have more choices, how the hell am I supposed to be any better at something? Number two. Facebook cares way more about the actual Facebook users than they do about your business, which is why you should respect them and why they're really good at their job. Number three, content that more likely inspires actions wins auctions for cheaper. Estimated action rate gets you a lower CPM, gets you better auctions, gets you better inventory. Your competitors are beating you not only because their business model is better, but because their ads make people enjoy their experience on Facebook or Instagram more than yours do. And last, more data equals better results. Facebook is a machine learning platform after all. It really, really is that simple. The key to making CBO work, one of the key secrets is remember, more options equals less stability. If you have three campaigns with three to five ad sets per, that might be 10 or more uncertainties on a regular basis. Now, stability, everybody says, well, Facebook's unstable. Well, stability by definition is a lack of uncertainty. So if you have a couple of lookalikes and a handful of interests, maybe you're targeting broad and a video view retargeting audience, how the hell do you think that's ever gonna be more stable than one broad audience. And as we talked about the breakdown effect before, maybe that interest group or that lookalike is outperforming your broad, but it only spends a little bit of the budget. So what you're saying is it can't actually do better because it can't actually spend enough to be something you can build your business on. And every time you try to do that, oh look, it broke and Facebook doesn't work anymore. And it has nothing to do with disrespecting the algorithm. One of the key things to think about when it comes to making Facebook and CBO work is to remember their business model. Facebook cares way more about their users than they do about you as an advertiser. Here's a fact. Your ad is a burden. It is extremely unlikely that anybody opened up their phone or signed onto their computer today specifically to admire all of your hard work. If Facebook showed every ad that you wanted to every person you wanted them to, whatever you wanted, do you really think you would ever log on to Facebook again? If your Facebook and Instagram was chock full of a whole bunch of advertisers who didn't give a damn about you, and it was all just ads trying to make you buy, buy, buy right now, would you ever, ever log in again? Of course not. And for that, you're welcome. One of the keys to making CBO work is to understand that content that inspires actions wins auctions for cheaper. Now, here's an empirical fact, and you can argue if you want to, but you're wrong. Ads do the targeting. 
Bottom line. Facebook shows content to people who want to see it. If people don't want to engage with your content, but you want to try to force it on them, you'll have to pay extra to enjoy the pleasure of being a liability to their business model and their bottom line. If somebody came into your business and decided to profiteer off of your customers, and when you charge them more because it cost you money, and you decided to not treat them equally, do you think it would be right for those people to say that you're broken? If you don't give a damn about your partner, why should they give a damn about you? One of the absolute keys to CBO is to understand one very important principle that comes to every single machine learning platform ever in the history of computers and society at large. It's a simple, simple fact. More data equals better results. Spend or impressions equals data. So the more data you give the machine, the better it's going to do at giving your job. Now, lowest cost or highest volume now, I remember when it was auto bid, uh, means that Facebook will try to deliver you the most for your spend. So let me ask you a real question. How in the world could less data in more places possibly be good? Why is it that you running four or five campaigns or four or five ad sets of different lookalike sizes and interest groups and bidding models and all of that? How is that possibly going to give you a better result than letting the machine do its job? One of the secrets to maximizing CBO comes at understanding the lie of ABO. The results you see are the direct results of the impressions delivered. The reason that lookalike audience or that cost cap or that interest group or whatever does so well is because it didn't have to spend all of the budget. And how many times have we tried to force that on it and all of a sudden it doesn't work? Because Facebook is broken. Really? When you retroactively look at your performance, you are completely unable to plan for your future. Now, unless your share of voice is well over 50%, your daily frequency is above two. Yes, daily, not saying frequency and then some big number. No, break down by day and understand the daily frequency. No other frequency metric actually matters. If you don't have that metric, then you have no control over who sees your ads. So how do we make CBO work? Well, the answer is plain as day and Facebook's been telling it to you so that we're blue in the face uh, for four years now. And the honest truth is Facebook hasn't had any fundamental changes as a platform since 2018 other than aggregated events manager. And I know iOS 14 and all of this other fear mongering and fire and brimstone, all that other bullshit hasn't changed the way Facebook works. And anybody that blends those things fundamentally doesn't understand how Facebook operates. Put your best ads in as few audiences as possible. Put your highest confidence assets in a place where they're gonna get the most amount of data. It's a machine learning platform. Why would that possibly not be the best thing to do? Make ads people want to see. Remember that good performance you saw on an ad set that got less spend was because it got less spend. There were less people there who wanted to see your ad. That's why it worked. So let's break down the absolute simple truth here of how to make CBO work. And why you'll never actually have to worry about interest groups or local likes or retargeting audiences or a lot of other super shiny objects. The people that don't really know what they're talking about are going to preach to the moon while they're also complaining about iOS 14 ruining them, even though it had no effect on the algorithm at all because it hasn't changed in years. You're never going to get better by guessing what the future is going to be chasing out of context and incomplete data from yesterday. If you're complaining about attribution not working, you're complaining about delivery not going in the right place, and you're complaining about the system not working, how are you possibly gonna start managing to all that data that you said was trash to begin with to predict the future? That's just dumb. If CBO doesn't work for you, remember, the problem is almost always too little data in too many places. And that's super easy to fix. So stop fighting the fight, you're never gonna win.